Hi there, this is Andrew from LaptopReviews.com and I have here with me today the Vio S 13 inch on the left hand side and then on the right hand side is the Vio T. Now these are very similar laptops, uh, they're both 13 inch screens. The Vio T however is dubbed an Ultrabook by Sony whereas the Vio S is not. Now, as you can see here, the Vio T is slightly thinner. It's probably around uh, 0.2 inches slimmer there than the Vio S. The Vio S comes in just under an inch, whereas the Vio T comes in around 0.7 inches thick. Um, they uh, are pretty similar laptops, other than the fact uh, the, the processor in the core, or in the Sony Vio S, is a fully fledged standard voltage processor, whereas the Vio T has an undervolted ULV Core i5 processor. So you're going to get a performance difference there. So today my goal is just to talk about these laptops a bit, and uh, if you're looking at a Sony Vio and uh, are considering each of these, uh, just to talk about some of the features and why one might uh, fit your needs better than the other. Check out the screens on both of these laptops. Both of them have a 13 inch screen as I already mentioned. The Vio S that I have is a 1366 by 768 resolution. Same deal with the Vio T. You can however upgrade to a 1600 by 900 resolution on the Vio S that's in the premium model. The Vio T, the only option you get is the standard 1366 by 768 resolution. As far as viewing angles go on these models, if I push the screens back you'll see that um, the colors kind of distort once you push back the screen and uh, I would say that uh, they're really about equivalent as far as the, the quality there they they both distort to the same degree so you're not getting a high quality IPS panel like you would see um, in the ThinkPad X230 that has an IPS screen or more commonly known the Apple iPad so overall the screens are decent they have nice colors when you view them straight on but when you view from an angle, they do not look so great. And uh, the brightness is about equal on each of these laptops. The Vio T might be a little oversaturated, I would say, but um, it's a little hard to tell uh, just without a colorimeter or uh, the fact that we're, uh, we're in a dark room here, so it kind of might it would be a little bit enhanced in that sense. So just standing above to take a look at the keyboards here, you can see that the touchpad on the Vio S is larger than that on the Vio T. Um, so you have more space to move the cursor around and do your gestures and stuff like that. Um, so that's kind of a benefit. Um, they're both click pads, so you can uh, register left click by pushing down anywhere. Uh, you register right click by pushing down on the right side. Now, uh, the Vio S and Vio T keyboards are the same size. However, the, uh, the Vio S keyboard is definitely superior. The key travel is much better. Um, the Vio T suffers from a very short key travel. The keys do not stick out much and they do not push in very much. It's a little hard to tell from this angle, but uh, it's definitely true that the, the keys stick up more in the Vio S, whereas the Vio T just, it, you kind of hit the key and it goes clunk. There's just not much travel, but you get a softer push and more travel in the Vio S. So. The Vio S definitely wins in this in this comparison with the keyboards, but it's pretty typical for Ultrabooks to have uh, keyboards that have short key travel and just are substandard to uh, larger size laptops. Let's take a look around the ports on each of these laptops. I've got the Vio T on top of the Vio S. So the Vio T has a USB 2.0 and USB 3.0 port here, whereas the Vio S just has an optical drive located right here now. The optical drive does not uh, come on the Vio T, so that's one feature you're missing on the Vio T. I should also mention there's a dual headphone microphone jack right here on the back of the Vio S. So rotating around to the front, there are no ports on either of these laptops. Rotate around to the right side, we have a bunch of ports for the Vio S. So let's just do that first. We have um, an HD Duo Magic Gate card reader here, then an SD card reader here. VGA monitor out, HDMI, uh, two USB 3.0 ports, and then a USB 2.0 port that's powered, and an Ethernet jack here, and then the power jack. The Vio T has a headphone port here, 
Then we have an SD card reader here, HDMI, VGA monitor out, and then Ethernet. So while the Vio T does have a pretty good selection of ports uh, compared to other Ultrabooks, the Vio S still has more simply because it's a fully fledged notebook and has more space. It's slightly thicker. So one important feature to compare of the uh, Vio T and Vio S is just the weight since the Vio T claims to be an Ultrabook and should therefore be light. Well, lighter. So let's put the Vio T to the scale. So according to my scales, it's three pounds, 6.2 ounces. So just under three and a half pounds. Let's get the Vio S in the picture here. Here we go. Three pounds, almost 13 ounces. So it is heavier by about seven ounces or so which translates to about half a pound heavier, almost half a pound heavier. So not a huge difference there, but uh, the Vio T is certainly lighter. And uh, therefore, if you were looking for the lightest possible machine of these two, the Vio T is it. Let's just look at the design a little of each of these laptops from Sony. So the Vio S is black. The Vio T is silver color we have here. It's got a brushed metal finish, whereas the Vio S is just sort of this matte black here. Now, they're both made of metal, but the Vio S is made of a magnesium alloy, so it's great for durability. Whereas the Vio T is made of an aluminum metal finish, so if we look inside here, it'll even tell you that, aluminum. So. Uh, the aluminum is slightly lighter than the magnesium, but I would say that uh, the Vio S does feel a little more solid than the Vio T. Now, they're both very solid. I mean, there's no flex to either of these. And you'll see I'm trying to push it in here. There's just, there's just really no gip. So I wouldn't be uh, afraid to take either of these in my backpack and tote it around and maybe as a travel laptop as a businessman. They're not going to break on you. They're very firmly built. Uh, another design feature is to mention, uh, worth mentioning is that there is a backlit keyboard in the Vio S. The Vio T I have does not have that, but it is a feature that you can get. So um, I just find that the, the backlit keyboard not only makes things more usable, but also is kind of a cool looking feature as well. Let's just talk about the performance a little of each of these laptops. So the Vio S comes with a fully fledged Core i5 or Core i7 processor from Intel. The Vio T meanwhile comes with an uh, ULV Vio S or um, excuse me, ULV Core i5 processor from Intel. So that means it's going to be slightly slower just because it's undervolted. So just to see how that would affect things, according to Windows Experience Index, the processor gets a 6.9 rating on this Vio T, so that's uh, that's Core i5 processor I have in here, it's 1.7 gigahertz. Whereas on the Vio S, the Core i5 I have gets a 7.1 rating. So just a little faster there as, as far as uh, rating performance. And uh, some other advantages to mention with the Vio S is you can get NVIDIA uh, 640M dedicated graphics, which would make the Vio S a potential gaming laptop. There is no dedicated graphics option for the Vio T since it's an Ultrabook. Uh, you can configure a fully fetched SSD in the Vio S, whereas in the Vio T, you get a regular hard drive and then a SSD, mini SSD cache, which helps speed things up, but it's not quite the same as having a fully fetched SSD. So on the performance front, the Vio S is certainly the winner between these two laptops.